Christopher Wambua, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Kenya's biggest conversation. Welcome to the hot seat. Thank you. Now, it's a uh, big. Are you still acting? You still have. Yes, a, I'm still acting. How long do you act as, as, a, <laughs> as a CEO? Okay. That's a story for another day. <laughs> <laughs> acting Chief Executive Officer of the Kenya Film Classification Board. Uh, your predecessor had occupied this seat and had gotten some lot of light of mileage. In fact, by the time he was leaving, people had branded him Deputy Jesus. Now here you are. Did you occupy that seat as Deputy Jesus as well? <laughs> well, uh, not quite. I think uh, that was a title that the media d g gave to him and mm. uh, d digital netizens uh, decided to <laughs> apportion to him. But for me, basically, I'm executing the government job. And the religion, yes, may be important, mm. but uh, these are largely matters of state. Mm. And uh, religion, while it may have a place, is not the main driver of the job that we are doing. Yeah. What drives the job? The laws drive the job. Mm -hmm. What the, laws are these? And the laws are the, the Fume and State Place Act, mm -hmm. of, uh, which is Cap Triple Two of, of the laws of Kenya. And uh, basically that law confers uh, to KFCB the mandate of uh, regulating the creation, the broadcasting, the possession, the distribution and exhibition of uh, film and broadcast content within the Republic of Kenya. And what, when I, we talk about uh, creation, we are saying that uh, anyone who wants to participate in the industry in terms of filmmaking and uh, other forms of content creation mm -hmm. that uh, involve uh, film, videos, and uh, any content in audiovisual format, mm. they must acquire a license from the film, uh, Kenya Film Classification Board and uh, this involves uh, this in, uh, basically entails uh, both local filmmakers mm. and foreign uh, filmmakers. Mm. Um, the licensing function also applies to individuals or entities that want to run uh, cinema theaters across the country. We have a mandate to license those theaters and to ensure that the theaters uh, do not admit uh, minors when content that would be deemed inappropriate for children is showing. Or, or airing mm -hmm. and uh, for the broadcast sector basically what we are required to do is that uh, before any content goes on air be it uh, that is pre-recorded uh, programming mm. not live programming mm. that uh, it conforms to the, the rules that, that govern the watershed period mm. that meaning that it should be appropriate for, for family viewing mm. between uh, 5 a.m. in the morning to around 10 p.m. in the evening Okay. That is the period we refer to as the watershed period. Mm. And that role actually of classification in, involves uh, assigning a rating, age-appropriate rating mm. to programming so okay. that parents, caregivers and guardians can uh, take advantage of the advice so provided to guide minors and other members of uh, society on how to consume uh, broadcast content for that, for that matter. Mm. Okay. Can we argue that the reason or the rationale for the Kenya Film and Stage Plays Act is basically for morality yes to a large degree but uh, the main reason is to ensure that uh, we safeguard our culture mm. our national values and aspirations and uh, more importantly to protect minors from uh, premature exposure mm -hmm. to adult experiences mm. so that we do not expose them to a lot of violence mm. which could be harmful to their psycho emotional development we don't expose them to nudity mm -hmm. and uh, early exposure to sexual scenes. Mm. We do not uh, incite people to war or mm. propagate, propaganda for, for war, if you like, or hate speech. And we also do not uh, pro, you know, profane or, 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 or commit blasphemy against uh, religious uh, beliefs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is, the, what is the guide or are there several guides through which this mandate then is practiced? Um, yeah. When we're saying okay, come out and, you know, produce, create film and, you know, other things, um, bring your talent to bear. What is the guide because of, of the things that you're talking about now? Or are there several guides, whether they be religious, whether they be, you know, more, if it's moral, then we say, okay, so what is the guide? What is the threshold that we are saying against this, then we will not... Uh, sir, we will not go beyond. Um, yes. What, what are those? Yeah, basically we have uh, a local rating system, which begins by general 
uh, viewership or exhibition, GE. It's uh, one of the ratings that uh, KFCB provides. And this is provided for, for content that is uh, actually clean mm -hmm. and appropriate for family viewing or people of all ages. And we usually advise that this content runs from 5 a.m. in the morning to possibly around uh, 7. Then we have the next level, which is known as parental guide, uh, guidance, mm -hmm. where we are saying that this is content that is uh, not, may not be suitable for children under the age of 10. Mm -hmm. And we are saying that parents should exercise responsibility and watch these programs with their children so that they can be able to guide them. Now, there's another rating that we, we refer to as uh, 16, mm -hmm. and we are saying this is, uh, this, is, uh, this is assigned to content that is uh, meant for, uh, for, for people who are at the age of 16 and below. And the, basically, to the, the, the threshold starts are, are such that the form of violence in, uh, in, uh, that is allowable mm -hmm. under, under parental guidance, for instance, would be very mild. Mm -hmm. Even nudity would be extremely mild. Mm. And it should be justifiable by context. Mm -hmm. Probably passing a very important message and stuff like that. Mm. By 16, we, we are going towards moderate. By 18, uh, rating 18 actually, they, 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 they become a bit more extreme. But now, beyond 18, there is what we refer to as the uh, restricted, mm. where where the level of intensity, frequency of some of these classifiable elements, which we have said is uh, uh, sex, violence, propaganda for war, and uh, incitement, horror, uh, uh, these parameters. Mm. If they are extremely intense, frequent, and, uh, and, and with potential to create harm, mm. then the content will be pushed to 18, which mm. means that that content should be after. 10 p.m. in the evening. Mm. So those are the guidelines. Mm. And the gu guidelines are known as the Kenya Film Classification Guidelines. I get a feeling that uh, this law, good as it may be, uh, was written in the previous century under different circumstances. What well, we are talking about the modes of consumption being television, which is very highly regulated and regulatable by the Communications Authority. You're talking about uh, film theatres, which are easily regulatable, and also production, which was easily regulatable because it was production companies which are licensed. Nowadays, when you talk about you licensing content creators, we are creating content every single day using our mobile devices. We are sharing content every single day using social media platforms. We are broadcasting content live using social media platforms. So are you finding challenges of dealing with this law as it was written and the situation on the ground as it were. Yeah, precisely. Because actually the laws that we are using were meant for linear television model mm -hmm. where the viewer can only access content when they, they sit uh, behind the, in front of the, the, the television screen and where if, when content is produced, if you are not there or, or, or broadcast, if you are not there, you will not be able to get the, 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 the content that has been uh, distributed. Mm -hmm. But now we, we are in the digital era and uh, we've realized that the laws may require certain adjustments so that they fit uh, the obtaining uh, environment. And that's why we have developed a framework known as the core regulation framework. And in, in the core regulation framework, what we are saying mm -hmm. is that we need to, there are so many content creators and the model that is existing now is that uh, before you broadcast or you distribute or exhibit, mm -hmm. you must bring that content to KFCB. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at the environment now with digital mm -hmm. migration, the number of television stations have become so many, yep. so many that I think we have, uh, we have more than 100 uh, FM stations in the country. Yep. So it means that the 15 people I have as examination officers, even if industry wanted to comply and brought that content to us, we may not be able to. We don't have the capacity. We don't have the capacity. Mm. So what we are saying now is that we want to seed 70% of that content to broadcasters mm -hmm. so that they can be able to rate it internally. But before we seed that, uh, that responsibility to broadcasters, uh, where they'll be examining and rating 70% of the content that they wish to, 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 to put out there, mm. they would go through some training to understand how classification is done. Mm. And what KFCB will be doing is just to check whether you are complying or not. Now, we, besides broadcasters, we have uh, other platforms that have come in 
the VODs, mm. the vo uh, video on demand. Yeah. Uh, companies like Hulu, Netflix, and so forth. Yeah. If you look at the amount of content that is on Netflix today, for instance, it's way beyond our capacity as KFCB mm -hmm. to regulate. To regulate. Mm. So basically what we are saying, and we've already started negotiations and we have developed that framework already, we subjected, to, we subjected it to stakeholder engagement. Mm. And basically what uh, industry is telling us, like for VODs, mm. is that give us uh, the authority to regulate, actually to rate, examine and rate 100%. Because if you look at the model of VODs, they do a global release. Yeah. Now, Global release means that uh, if it's released in New York or in America, Kenya also has access to that content. Immediately. F the, model, the model of business is such that they cannot be saying we wait for Kenya to look at it. Yeah, and then, to classify yes. it before we release yeah. it. So what countries are doing, and Kenya now wants to join uh, the rest of the developed world in this area, mm. is to allow them to run their programs. They have been trained on how to do self-classification uh, and rating of programs. And then the regulator just monitors for compliance. Where you find that the rating assigned is not uh, appropriate, you mm. told them, no, 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 we've looked at this, the rating is not appropriate. Please assign a more appropriate rating. And basically what the video on demand companies are doing is that they are, they are, they are using uh, technology mm. for rating. You know, through machine learning, mm. uh, artificial intelligence, they develop systems that are able to understand the local classification system of a country and ap apply it to content with, with very minimal human intervention. And that's why we will be just checking, doing sampling, and also listening to consumers mm. to see whether the ratings are aligned. Mm. So while the law may not be up to the may not be up to date. We are taking proactive steps uh, with, with, within the space of the law to allow for a bit, for self classification. Broadcasters, we are saying, we we'll give them uh, seventy percent, mm. so that we only look at thirty percent. And by doing that, by the way, what we are doing is that they underpaid the examination fees. I think at hundred percent, mm. but we are giving seventy percent to them. And we are willing to remain with 10%. Mm. Because the role of regulation is to consume, to protect the consumer. So the 30% is not so is much just of the like money. quality control. Just quality control. But eventually we mm. want to seed, seed everything to that. Everything to broadcasters, to VODs and other content creators. And our work would just be to monitor. To then why do to we establish. need you? Sorry? Why do we need you? No, no, no. The monitoring part. Okay. The monitoring so, part will, will remain very important going forward. Because, uh, you know, you cannot uh, seed everything and look the other way. You have to ensure that... So your role is just be monitoring and enforcement. Yes, monitoring and enforcement. If, if we say that, um, you know, KFCB then seeds and allows content creators and content broadcasters and the platforms to be the ones that are doing the rating mm. and giving access according to age, we are basically saying that we, we depend on their goodwill at, at present. Because there's no law, for example, that tells you that uh, the kind of deal that you've entered into with the VOD platforms um, from Hulu to Amazon Prime to Netflix to, to, to all of them, Showmax, that they are binding. The beauty yeah. is that uh, government has also realized uh, the, the gaps in the law. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's, a, there's the proposed uh, uh, Kenya Film Bill and uh, the, the, the revised uh, act, mm. which I think have been already developed. They are awaiting discussions at Parliament. I'm told that uh, Cabinet has already looked at these do documents and approved of them. So basically, it's not that the government is uh, sleeping on the job. They've seen the need, identified the, the importance of uh, reviewing the laws. Mm. And uh, sooner or later, the, 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 the proper legislation will be in place mm. to accommodate the modernization of the reforms that we are trying, trying to implement mm. at KFCB. Mm. Basically, yeah. what, I'm, what I'm saying is I, I, I'm wondering whether this is ever going to be enforceable with the current the trends that we have. So you're talking about um, an international company that is domiciled elsewhere, yes. that is only accessible to Kenya because we have access to the internet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. And then Kenyans are consuming this. So you create a, a, an account, you start consuming content. This company is different in, I mean, is operating in different jurisdictions. At what point does this company then start, you know, following the Kenyan classification um, 
system, at what point does it start enforcing? Because once, yes, you've classified and said, okay, this content, they write, this is 16, this is 13, this is PG for general audience and all, but restricting access. The issue is that uh, even international companies that are registered as elsewhere have a responsibility to conform to local laws. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, through our engagement with these companies, they are more than willing mm -hmm. to ensure that they comply with the law. Mm -hmm. And we've told them that as you wait for the law to be adjusted, let us do a pilot. Mm -hmm. A pilot that can run from probably one year or, or two years mm -hmm. as the laws are... Uh, being uh, uh, changed, yep. we we try to create an environment that is enabling and facilitating for them to do businesses. Mm. Uh, by the way, some of these international companies, most of them, really value and respect local laws. Mm -hmm. And uh, from our discussion so far, many of them are willing to join the framework. In fact, as, as you speak, uh, Netflix, we are at a very advanced uh, stage of uh, negotiation. We will be this week we'll be sharing the draft agreements mm -hmm. that will bind us to operate using this model because even if we told them abide by the law as it is we would uh, we would really be entering and creating a barrier for their business to, to mm -hmm. carry their businesses uh, uh, without a, without a lot of uh, obstacles mm -hmm. so i think they are willing to really uh, abide by any framework that facilitates them to do business within the, the within the country Okay, so I mean, I think that obviously we see that a lot of the focus then goes towards, I mean, quite a lot of focus goes towards making sure that programming or that, you know, content is um, age protective or that young, the younger ones are protected, that yes. they should not have to view or they should not uh, uh, be privy to content which is not uh, conducive for their age. Mm. Now, with all that we have on the screens with some of the other providers that you have, you've talked about yes whose responsibility then is it to make sure that children are kept safe because there's some stuff that as it is you're not really going to be able to to you know keep away from them is there i would say it's a collective responsibility mm. parents have a very good uh, a very important role to play in this space because at the end of the day government will uh, will come up with the frameworks mm -hmm. that are meant to protect the children. But parents, their work is also to do parenting. And, and parenting involves not just buying the devices, but guiding children or now to consume content mm -hmm. on the devices that we, we, we buy and give to them mm -hmm. so that we do not neglect our responsibility as parents. When you, give a de when you buy a device, for instance, mm -hmm. Uh, most of them have parental control mm -hmm. uh, mechanisms, mm -hmm. which means that they have software solutions that you can use to restrict children from see, seeing certain, certain contents. Some, even there are apps now that uh, can be able to, uh, to allow you as a parent to monitor what your children are seeing. Yeah. You can even limit the screen time using certain apps that are in the market. They are commercial. Mm. So I think parents need to acclimatize themselves to some of these issues and take their responsibility of uh, taking care of their children more seriously and guide them on how to consume uh, content in a responsible and meaningful manner. Mm. Yeah. So as much as we, we do our best to, to, to assign the age ratings, mm -hmm. it is the responsibility of the parent to ensure that the, where we've said this is for 18, they educate their, their, their children and sensitize them that that 18, they should not be able to, to look at it. Mm. Yeah. How do we merge between or, you know, straddle between what's happening globally and what we still consider our laws and our traditions in the country? I'm going to go straight into it. Uh, LGBTQ. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of content now on the video on demand platforms and on the other platforms that openly show openly gay couples and such now we know that legally in kenya this is uh, illegal but we know that it's being practiced globally and now there's content that has this there is no it it doesn't have any openly sexual content mm -hmm. but it's basically just having two men who have a child and they're both dads of this child mm -hmm. now is that appropriate for young children in kenya or is it not no it's not appropriate. And that's why we are saying... And so uh, what, what would you use to say that this is inappropriate? Um, 
you know the the laws of the country mm. do not allow lgbt plus mm. content or even uh, relationships and basically as we read and classify content we also consider other applicable laws like for instance if you look at uh, the the nakada act mm. Mm. there there are restrictions about advertising or rako within the watershed period that's yeah. between 5 a.m. and 10 p.m. in the evening yeah. and our 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 our, our film classification guidelines have been aligned if there's any content that normalizes uh, glorifies uh, same sex relationships we our, our position in Kenya has always been that kind of content is restricted and it should not be uh, broadcast or exhibited or distributed within the borders of the country now under the new arrangement so this is not about age it's about blanket restriction yes blanket restriction mm -hmm. yeah so basically that's what we have been doing you've seen in the recent past we've had uh, to restrict quite a number of uh, of uh, of movies there's mm -hmm. one that was uh, i am samuel yeah. which uh, i think was a local production very good production but that really was uh, normalizing uh, same 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 sex uh, marriages and relationships mm -hmm. and we pronounce ourselves on it and mm. say that uh, it could not be allowed for uh, broadcast exhibition or distribution within the the borders of the of the, of the country mm. okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's take a break okay i can see yeah yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah okay <laughs> That's why I was heading there so that you can take a break and let that sink in. It's half past eight. <laughs> this is Kenya's biggest conversation. It's the Situation Room. Our guest today is Christopher Wambua. He's the acting CEO of the Kenya Film Classification Board, not to be confused with the Kenya Film Commission. Mm. It's a Kenya Film Classification Board. We're talking about the importance of wholesome media content in raising healthy and well-adjusted children. What kind of content is suitable for our children to be consuming? That's what we're discussing. Let's take a break. This is The Situation Room, the only way to start your day. Eric Latif, Ndu Oko, Christopher Mbua, Acting CEO, Kenya Film Classification Board. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So I'm, I'm looking at the, the, some of the first things that you had said in terms of, you know, um, uh, encouraging, uh, also in, in terms of the encouragement of content for Kenyan producers right um talent bringing that out how then so but then we're also saying at the same time with this classification that then you can be creative bring that we will make sure that it goes out you know uh, to the market but at the same time there's a certain uh caliber of content that you're going to lock out do you feel that there would be a clash then in terms of mandate, where on one hand we're encouraging more and more uh, producers to come out and do, you know, do the best of their work, but at the same time we're saying there are only certain waters within which you can swim. How do you marry the two? Well, basically, when you want to create content for broadcast or distribution or exhibition within the uh, Republic of Kenya, mm. what will happen is that first, before we give you the license, you are supposed to give us a synopsis mm. of the script mm. that we are going to use. Uh, in doing that production mm -hmm. and this sort of uh, helps us to advise you even before you start the, the creation of what is allowable uh, or, uh, or not mm -hmm. uh, you may have a very good production that may be having scenes of uh, same-sex relationships and will tell you that if you well that that is within your creative space mm -hmm. but the laws do not allow this the exhibition of this kind of content so you are guided at the point of getting the, the filming license mm. so that you know the do's and don'ts. Mm -hmm. So we don't see any contradiction. The contradiction would be if we gave you a license, allowed you to go on with the production, and then at the end of the production told you that uh, this co kind of content is restricted mm -hmm. for either uh, broadcast, uh, distribution, distribution or exhibition within the Republic of Kenya. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So basically, we guide them at mm -hmm. the beginning, mm -hmm. and uh, we you would just look at the synopsis or the uh, the script and advise whether this is allowable or, or not. not. And yes. yet they still go ahead and uh, I mean, for whomever the case may be, yes. go ahead and produce this content. What then fuels a decision to do that if they already have a predetermined guide on what they can or cannot produce? Generally, most of our content creators comply with that requirement. But we've seen a few mm -hmm. who will give us a synopsis mm. that indicates that the the content will be 
will not be harmful at all mm -hmm. for purposes of production and, and distribution across the country. But again, when they go to the field, mm -hmm. they do modifications. Mm -hmm. Modifications which are not allowed. Because we also allow modification, but you must lie Stay with us so law. that we know what is happening. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have had a few cases where people will uh, give a script of a very allowable form of uh, content. We allow. Then at the rating, we realize that uh, they never conform to their script. Mm -hmm. And they have introduced themes that are not allowable within the country. And we, I wish to indicate that actually we've seen a lot of uh, donor agencies that are putting a lot of money into, <laughs> into production of same-sex uh, content, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes uh, the availability and the, the temptation to just uh, access this money mm -hmm. sometimes uh, makes some um, content creators to, to, to feel that they need to be creative in terms of uh, trying to to operate outside the, the, the limitations of the law mm. in order to access that uh, kind of money, which you've realized there's a lot of it if you want to uh, uh, create a content for that addresses issues of uh, LGBT. Mm. So the, yeah. our content creators generally mm. will comply with the law, but there are a few who will... There are those uh, that will not. There yes. are those that are, you know, um, are, are part of the conversation. Yes. Now, of course, there's a global narrative around this, and we see it all the time. Former President Uhuru Kenyatta is hosted on CNN, is asked the same question that new President William Ruto is asked about, you know, same sex and, and the laws of LGBT in the country. We see these kind of conversations. So obviously we've got to be alive to the reality that there is a push for the world to have this conversation. Do you think it's about time that we then started opening up the conversation at the community level for public participation? as we're talking about, you know, changing the laws to conform with the new day realities that the previous law was looking at um, distribution within film halls and TVs that are regulated. Now we have got to amend this law to look at other forms of distribution. Should we also be discussing about amending the law to look at other kind of content that should be allow allowed or allowable? Well, I think that will be within the, the, the space of our parliament, uh, SKFCB, when that space opens up, will be more than willing to also uh, open up the space for production of that kind of content. Mm. But before that happens then, it, we find ourselves uh, in a very awkward situation because we cannot allow that which our laws and our cultures does not, does, uh, does not allow. Mm. But probably there is a need <coughs> for conversations going forward. But that conversations are not going to be had with KFCB, mm. Th those conversations will be will, will, will have to be held or done with our, with our parliament, and uh, these issues can vast. And even their wisdom, they find that it is important to relook at that aspect, mm. so that our constitution and the other laws that are aligned to it are adjusted and reviewed, so that they can be able to allow these things. But mm. before then, mm. for us, we will proceed on the basis that these are this is the law. These are the sins. These are the laws, and we we have to enforce them. And you are. classify films according, according to, to the law. The law. Yes. Mm. Teacher, teacher, may I report <laughs> that then some of the partners that you're having discussions with yes. are distributing content in Kenya that is in violation of Kenyan laws. That's Already, mm. as you have this conversation, as you're talking about, you know, signing partnerships, some of the content on these platforms then violates this law. I'll tell you, mm. when we get to see this content, we write to them. Mm -hmm. And most of them actually are restricting the viewership of this content within our country. They have technologies. These VODs have technologies that provide for geo-specific distribution of content, mm. such that if a country's laws restrict certain types of content, there's technology that inhibits the distribution or the broadcast or exhibition of the same in those respective countries. Mm -hmm. And that's why now, because of our, our discussions with Netflix, they are curating their classification system that is very uh, aligned with our, with, with our laws, mm -hmm. with a view to, of ensuring that in future, once we sign the agreement, s some of this content is not visible mm -hmm. at all within the, within the Republic mm -hmm. of Kenya. Okay. And, and, and in terms of exhibition of, uh, of content on VODs, I must say that there's no, <laughs> there's no lacuna. Mm. Because the law clearly stipulates that any content that is either distributed 
and exhibited within the Republic of Kenya, it should conform to the local laws on mm. film production and, and distribution. And it should also be aligned with the local uh, regulatory system. Mm. So whether you are exhibiting on the theater, on a, a VOD platform, mm -hmm. the law, there's no, there's no vacuum. The mm -hmm. law is very clear mm -hmm. because the law doesn't say which medium. Mm -hmm. Exhibition as is irrespective of the medium. The boundaries mm -hmm. of yes. Kenya. Yeah. Okay. I know also that now you've been uh, quite concerned then when children are home from school and that means they have a lot more time on their hands. And then, of course, it's going towards... Um, being on different platforms we're not just talking about watching television yes i mean with the age of social media things have blown up exponentially mm -hmm. in terms of now what you know the younger age are able to see able to access now being in that i want to call it watchdog position uh, what then have you been able to do i mean they're going back to school in a few days uh, others will be on holiday thereafter but what have you been able to do or what measures have you been put in place have you been able to put in place to make you know this arena safer Basically, because we know it's a shared uh, and collective responsibility, mm. what we are doing is that we've launched a digital parenting program, which program is aimed at uh, educating and sensitizing uh, parents and caregivers on the best ways of uh, guiding their children on uh, consum consumption of media, either in the traditional forms or in the new formats of internet and uh, VODs. And basically what we are doing is that we've come into partnership with the public sector and private, sec uh, private sector institutions like Google, uh, the Communications Authority of Kenya, um, Code IP, and many others mm -hmm. who are helping us uh, roll out this uh, these, uh, digital reparation program. You may be pleased to, to know that actually in October, early October, we are launching a digital parenting program in a... Uh, in, in liaison with Netflix, mm -hmm. so that we continue educating parents on how to use the Netflix platform properly. Because as it is, if you open Netflix, you find there's a platform for mature persons mm -hmm. and another platform for children. Mm -hmm. But kids, be who they are, if they are unsupervised, they know that the, the content that is in, in that, that uh, category is more interesting. Mm. So I think without proper guidance, parents will not be able to uh, utilize the existing parental control mechanisms or functionalities that are there mm -hmm. within the platform to restrict uh, access of children to content that is not meant for their mm -hmm. for their consumption. Okay. Yeah. So digital parenting is a way to go. We will continue rolling out this program in Nairobi, mm -hmm. across media and elsewhere, so that our parents have uh, have the requisite information, skills, and knowledge to basically guide. Their, 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 their minors on how to consume uh, uh, content uh, responsibly. Mm -hmm. And we also want to involve teachers and other caregivers so that if children are in school, and given that uh, government has been very helpful in terms of uh, providing uh, digital tools to mm -hmm. primary school uh, students, the, the parents, are, the, the caregivers are also properly guided so that uh, they can be able to take care of, uh, of, of our children while in their, in their custody. Mm. Yeah. Christopher, you are acting CEO of KFCB now. Before this, you worked at the uh, Communication Authority. And obviously, from that space, you engaged with other global actors and global regulators in the ITU, and you sat in the ITU board, right? With KFCB, are you linking up with other agencies and organizations within East Africa and Africa? and having a common conversation about how best to protect these vulnerable audiences, the children, from harmful content that they consume. Yes, indeed. We know that we can't regulate in a vacuum and that uh, Kenya is part of a global system. And what we've done is that uh, we, we as Kenya, K uh, Classification Board, and South Africa and Nigeria, we are championing an initiative known as Harmonization of Content Regulation in Africa. And the rationale for this uh, framework is to ensure that uh, we develop similar regulatory platforms and tools across the region. Mm. Given that uh, the production of content has increased so much, we need to eventually as a continent have one rating system, which if South Africa has rated something as 13, mm. because our cultures are, are more or less the same, mm. and the same as Nigeria, 
then Kenya will, will not need to again look at the content again. They will just apply that uh, that system. So we are the nascent stages of uh, fostering this kind of uh, international cooperation or regional cooperation. And we are hoping that at the, in the fullness of time, it will be, be taken to the AU mm. so that uh, the same can be adopted by other countries uh, within the African region. Mm. For Kenya, we have already gotten in touch with our neighbors through the Ministry of East African uh, Community and sensitize them to join this initiative mm. so that even as East Africa, we can have a system that is more or less aligned. And if Uganda uh, probably uh, looks at some content that could be in a VOD and assigns it a certain rating, we will just be sharing database and applying the same across the East African region mm. and eventually across the African region. Mm. So indeed, we, we, are, we are alive to the, to the need for regional and international cooperation in issues of uh, regulating co uh, broadcast and film content across the, in the region. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, in terms of content that has been banned, I mean, and, you, and when you say banned, um, just for purposes of clarification, it cannot be aired, it cannot be uh, distributed. 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 It can't be possessed. Cannot be, oh, it cannot even be possessed. Yes, if you are found with it, it's mm -hmm. an offense. It's an offense. Yes. However, mm. we've seen instances where content that has been banned here then has been taken to other territories and has been glorified, has been um, entered has for been awards. Entered for awards, you know. How do you reconcile between here saying it's been banned, but then it's been recognized on the international scale, on an international scale and an international level? Does that uh, pr does that bring about any kind of conflict in any way? You know, the our our, our mandate mm. is within Kenya. Mm. And if the laws restricts uh, restrict certain types of content mm. from being broadcast, uh, exhibited, distributed, and possessed within the Republic of, the, uh, of Kenya, mm. we shall enforce the law. Mm. But there are other markets where some of this content is uh, allowed. And if our creatives create that content for international consumption mm. and not uh, region, uh, you know, Kenyan consumption, we have no problem. Mm. The, it shows that our our industry has matured, that our our, our, pro, our capacity to produce a high quality audiovisual products is a, is is at the global scale mm -hmm. or level. So it's something to celebrate. But showcasing that content within the Republic of the of Kenya, mm -hmm. I think, is what we we are there to ensure that we we protect children and uh, our members of society from mm -hmm. from content that we the law uh, declares uh, inappropriate. For local consumption, so we don't see any, 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 any conflict anywhere. Any conflicts mm -hmm. anywhere? Yes. You've done your job. We've done our job. If others are not doing their job, that's fine. That's the that's upon uh, them. Yeah. <laughs> you know what we're discussing today, which is about uh, children getting exposed to harmful content, is not a new conversation. I mean, it's a conversation that has really gained ground in the country. The Kenya Film Classification Board is spearheading this conversation. The Communications Authority yes. is also spearheading a conversation. Community. Is uh, the society is spearheading the conversation about how do we protect our children? It's with the realization that our children have access to many more platforms than we actually could control. Yes. So you give given your child a phone. Every new phone being bought now is a smartphone. Okay. True. And the communications authority has allowed the uh, mobile service providers to allow people to have access to the internet. Mm. Now, let's come to what the outgoing education CS, Professor George Mago, has been quoted as having said. He's also raised concern about children getting access to pornographic content and saying, yes. I wish we could restrict this. Do you agree with the sentiment of Professor Magoha that we should find a way of restricting access to pornographic websites? Now, somebody who has straddled both worlds of the communication authority, regulator on that side, and now regulator on the side of consumption, what do you say? I think it's a conversation that uh, the country needs to have. Uh, and uh, the sad reality is that uh, uh, with the current uh, and ongoing uh, SIM card registration, mm. the mobile operators will have uh, the capacity to know who is using which device or which number. Mm -hmm. And with that kind of information, I think they need to exercise uh, the duty of care so that if a SIM card is registered as uh, being used by a minor, they have, they are tools, they have systems, they have tools within their systems that they can use 
So they can block certain sites. They can sites. block such sites, yes. I'll tell you in the UK, mm. the mobile operators have, uh, have gone to the, to the content regulator like ourselves, the classification agency, and asked the agency mm. to guide them on sites that should be restricted for, ch for children, from mm. children. Mm. And it is that kind of duty of care that I wish our mobile industry would, would, would show. Because these are good technologies that kids can use to enhance their learning outcomes for entertainment, education and information. But uh, without the, applying the requisite uh, safeguards, there is a risk that uh, we may, may uh, expose our children to, to a lot of harm. psychological and emotional harm by, you know, exposing them to uh, premature.